Hey guys, so since it's 2017, we thought we'd take a very different approach to the type of content that we're making, since there's just so much to cover when it comes to food. We've done the recipes and all that, and it's great, but at the same time, I thought it'd be really interesting to focus down on certain ingredients that you use every day that you might not necessarily know much about. So I partnered up with Landers to look at their portfolio of products and to see how it can kind of help you navigate the grocery aisles. Oil and fats are essential to cooking. Imagine just cooking like chicken breast without oil. It'd be disgusting. It tastes like cardboard. First, let's just get something really clear out of the way. You would think something like vegetable oil would actually be more healthy than lard because lard comes from a pig or some sort of animal, correct? Whereas vegetable oils come from vegetables, so you think vegetables are healthy. You always have to look at ingredients on how they're transformed with heat and how they're applied when you're cooking them and how they change. That's really important. What happens there is that you have things that come out of the oil that are not really good for your health. Those are called aldehydes. Aldehydes are linked to certain causes of cancer, so you don't want to have too much of them around. You would have to put all the oils that have really high polyunsaturated fats in that grouping, and you wouldn't want to use those for high heat cooking. So what are those with high polyunsaturated fats? So you'd have your vegetable oil, you'll have your canola oil, you would have any types of seed or nut oils that come from that. Oils that are actually really much higher in monounsaturated fats and saturated fats, anything from an animal, butter, lard, things like that, olive, avocado, coconut, these are all really high in monounsaturated and saturated fats and less on polyunsaturated, which means when you're actually cooking with them, they're better for you. Now that you understand that process, there's no real big scientific essay that tells you exactly which oil is better for you, whether you're consuming it or cooking with it. But with that kind of knowledge, you can basically navigate your way through it and decide which is best for you. Honestly, if I could choose just to use one or two oils in my house every day, it would be your regular olive oil and be maybe a scrap between coconut and avocado. Let's go through the oils one by one and just talk about their benefits, what they're good for, and what you can use them for. Let's get the most famous ones out of the way. So you've got your canola oil and your vegetable oil all over here. These oils are most commonly used in most restaurants actually for deep frying simply because they have a really high smoke point of around 450 Fahrenheit. The problem is they don't really carry much flavor. So when you're cooking in them, the things you're cooking just literally taste like oil. Consider this the refined salt of the oil industry because they're made mostly from subsidized crops. They're really cheap and that's what makes them extremely widely available. But a lot of my friends in the Philippines have problems with acid reflux. And this right here is actually the cause of that. Yes, you can get acid reflux from many things, but vegetable oil or the overconsumption of vegetable oil at high temperatures can actually be one of the leading causes. If I were you, stay away from them. Peanut oil is not actually very famous. You don't really see it in most supermarkets. It is heavily used in places like Thailand and Vietnam or in China. What's great about it is that it has a strong taste of peanuts and what you cook in it actually has that nutty flavor, which is really great for things like curries and stir fries. I actually love to use this. It has an exceptionally high smoking point around 440 Fahrenheit, which is why it's probably popular for Southeast Asian cuisine. And in terms of health, honestly, as long as you don't use too much of it, it should be okay. Next, we have the olive oil. So if I wanted to put them in terms of order of what is best for high heat, so you would start with your pomace, which is great for high heat cooking. Then you have your regular olive oil, which is also great for like sauteing and things. You wouldn't deep fry in any of these. And finally, you have extra virgin olive oil, which in my humble opinion, should only be used for drizzling and for salad dressings. The big difference between all these different types of olive oils is that they're all pressed at different temperatures, which means that they all resist different temperatures. If you were to deep fry something in extra virgin olive oil, that oil would just turn very bad, very fast, and would just release and oxidize way too quickly and release all these things that you do not want in your food. So that's why, since the cold press method, keep it for cold preparations. Same thing goes for the olive oil and the pomace. You really wanna make sure that you're using it for the heats that are supposed to be applied to them. What's great about these oils is always available in different places, and they're filled with the types of fat that you actually need in your diet. The most important thing when it comes to oil is to make sure that you stay away from overconsumption. If you were to look at any oil from the back, you'll see that the total fat per tablespoon is 14 grams. That doesn't sound like anything to you. I don't really blame you. But when you think that one egg has about 4.5 grams of fat, then you're saying one tablespoon of olive oil is equivalent to three eggs. 
So, so always make sure, even if they're good for you, use them in very sparing quantities. They're really there just to help you cook things. Coconut oil. This is so popular now because of bearded hipsters in Brooklyn telling you that it's really good. One thing that's great about coconut oil in the Philippines is that we're surrounded by coconuts. Second thing that's good about coconut oil is that you can use it not only for your mouth, but you can put it in your hair, you can put it in your skin. It really helps a lot of different things. One of my new favorite ways of cooking food, the only problem is, is that it really does taste strongly of coconuts. It has a very high smoking point, more so than olive oil. So if you shallow fry things, coconut oil is much better than actually olive oil, just because it can take more heat. It's really filled with lots of great monounsaturated fats. It doesn't have much polyunsaturated fats, so it's actually a really good bed for you. Finally, something that I've actually only locally found in Landers is avocado oil. What's great about it, it has actually one of the highest smoking points amongst all the oils. This can go up to about 510 Fahrenheit. So it's the oil I use personally when I'm grilling on live flame. But what's great about it is that it can be used as a substitute for olive oil because it's also really delicious for salads and things like that because it has a really naturally buttery, kind of creamy flavor that enhances any type of ingredient that you put in it. Also, fun fact, there's an element in here that's said to actually improve eyesight. Just like carrots, if you don't like your carrots, go for your avocado oil. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a lot of information, but it's really great to know what goes into your food and more importantly, how your food's affected with the way you're cooking it. So hopefully you like it. If you wanna check out all our other Landers recipe video collaborations, make sure to like this Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channels.